everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today marks a very important day because it's been a while since we've had any new graphics cards. So I thought we'd kind of chew the fat a little bit, talk through maybe what's coming, maybe if the rumors are true, especially after the last Nvidia launch because well, everything on the web, every spec is wrong. Are we gonna have the same thing again? Only one way to find out. Let's do this. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Fire Cuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Fire Cuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So what is the point of this video? Well, today marks kind of a very important day. Nvidia are gonna be doing a live stream where they're gonna be unveiling Ampere. That's essentially gonna be the successor to the RTX 2000 series. So there are some things I guess we know, some things that are just rumored, some things that we don't know. So I thought I'd take this opportunity really to go through what we've been, I guess, relating and relaying on um, in the past let's say week, because a lot has happened in the last week. Yes, the rumor mill has taken us right up till then, but there has actually been some concrete information coming out. So to start with RTX 3090 graphics card leaks, it seems like every single time Nvidia release a graphics card, they seem to kind of change up the naming structure. I mean, I'm sure you'll all remember that when the RTX 2000 series launched, there was talk that it was gonna be something completely different. It wasn't gonna be 2000, it was gonna be 11 series. And yeah, it kind of just all went a little bit awry. The thing that we do know, I guess, started off with a rumor and that was based on the size of the card. I mean, this is an RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition. And just looking at the pictures and kind of what we can see from the, at least on the Founders Edition side of things, it definitely sort of goes to show that it's gonna be much, much larger. If anything, it's gonna be slightly thicker. So probably instead of uh, a dual, slot card we're maybe going to be looking at triple slot and i think essentially we're going to be looking at it kind of coming out a little bit further so probably bordering on the size of something like a rtx 20 series strix card or msi gaming x trio something along them lines it also looks like it could actually be a little bit taller but as you'll see from the pictures it can actually look a little bit deceiving because i mean if the card is technically thicker compared to this card in a picture, it's going to look like it's bigger this way and this way because it's actually closer to the camera when you're taking a top-down shot. So I'm a little bit dubious as to how sort of big it really is going to be, um, especially when you're sort of comparing the scale and things like that. Now, in terms of the design, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of what I've seen from the Founders Edition cards. Just looking at it, it just looks a little bit odd, but apparently there's method behind the madness. There's talk that it's gonna have a weird V-shaped PCB, so maybe that kind of dictates what it actually needs to have in terms of the cooler. What that means for non-reference cards and non-Founder Edition cards could be something completely different, depending on if they go with the kind of reference PCB design or if they decide to go maybe with something a little bit more extreme and a little bit more let's say, on the, the scale that we've expected things to be up until this point. So one thing we have heard is that there are gonna be a lot of partners out there supporting it from launch day or around launch day. They really did it in a kind of weird way. So EK as well as AlphaCall both came out and said, we will have blocks ready and available around launch day. I mean, what does around launch day really mean? Does that mean that they're gonna have it from today? Because technically is today the launch day? Yes, we're gonna get the announcement from Nvidia telling us about, you know, these are the cards, but it does feel very much like a paper launch. As far as I'm concerned, I haven't really had that much contact with Nvidia at the moment. So really it's hard to sort of say what's gonna be happening. I've even had, you know, calls from AIB partners. So you're talking Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Palette, and so forth, asking if I've heard anything from Nvidia because they seem pretty much as in the dark as what we do as media outlets. But it does go to show that EK are definitely being pro proactive with it, the same with AlphaCall, and are gonna be releasing water blocks at sort of around launch. Now, does that mean it's just gonna be water, lock, water blocks for the Founders Edition cards, which kind of makes sense, but I'm guessing as time goes on and the AIB partners come out with their 
particular design and style of cards such as Strix, Gaming X Trio and so forth, we will actually see some blocks readily available for them as well. Now the AIB partners have definitely been quite prevalent when it comes to leaks and bits and bobs out there, but they've kind of stirred up the rumor mill in a really sort of fun way. So Zotac actually dropped what we called a huge hint regarding its Nvidia 3000 series GPUs. We basically saw a tweet from Zotac Japan saying coming soon and it had a picture of what looked to be quite a massive white card. Well it turned out that it's actually going to be an RTX 2060 Super. Uh, so from the looks of it they're just trying to I guess keep hold of a market that you know is very much wanting these types of products. When it comes to white PCB and white cards, there isn't really a lot out there. So I think Zotac are just trying to sort of keep the fire burning on the RTX 20 series because there's nothing to say that the RTX 20 series is completely stopping right now. Yes, there was talk about Nvidia sort of ramping down production, but there's nothing to say that there isn't a huge amount of stock in the retail channel, as well as, you know, in the AIB partners, warehouses and things like that. So Zotac probably still have a lot of cards out there. So very, very interesting in the fact that they kind of timed this in such a way that everyone really is wanting to know about the 3000 series and they didn't really give too much away apart from just saying, well, coming soon. Next up was Nvidia releasing the RTX 30 series teaser video. So or the 3000 series teaser video. It didn't really show us anything. It just kind of had some nice little design and abstract stuff going on but that's pretty much about it i mean what we could deduce from it and other things that we sort of saw from nvidia directly was that it does have this weird kind of v-shaped pcb and i guess the more important thing is that 12 pin power connector as we know with the 3000 series so 2080 super has an 8 pin and a 6 pin 2080 ti which is obviously the most power hungry card had two 8 pin power connectors now we're going to have a 12 pin power connector but it does come with the included adapter with the card, so you're not going to have any problems. But there is more to that as we move on. So mainly sort of with MSI, they actually unveiled a PSU, which is, from what I can tell, the first power supply out there that's going to have NVIDIA 3000 support. So it actually does come included with this funky kind of 12 pin power connector. So it's going to be very interesting to sort of see are we going to see new power supplies coming on the market or are we going to see kind of refreshes of power supplies just with this new connector or simply are power supply manufacturers just going to include this adapter sort of just in case although if the gpu manufacturer is including the adapter do we really need it from the psu manufacturer kind of lots of stuff to think about what i honestly think will happen is that power supply manufacturers are probably run out a lot of their stock and sort of change the design on new power supplies coming forward to have that kind of hardwired or uh, at least you know in a modular cable as opposed to using adapter uh they kind of you know see that moving forward with new releases of power supplies i don't think many people are going to do refreshes i think this guy kind of gives them an opportunity to maybe you know make a new model instead so we did see a lot of EEC registrations as well. So we saw MSI submitting multiple uh, registrations to the EEC. We also saw Pallet doing exactly the same for 3090, 3080, 3070 and 3060. So that's definitely given us kind of confirmation of the model numbers that are coming out, I guess, very, very soon. So by the looks of it, I think today is going to be all about 3090, maybe a little bit of information on 3080. But 3070 and 3060 is probably going to come at a later date. And Nvidia are really famous for doing this because what they typically do is release the top model. You sort of sit there and go, right, 3090, I want that at whatever price it's going to be. And you start saving up your money. As you get to say, say the card's going to be $1,500, $1,500. Pounds. As you get to about $700 sort of sitting there in your pocket, come on, I only need another $800, $800. Pounds. That's when they hit you with the 3070 and the 3060. And you sort of go, well... I've kind of got the money for that now. So instead of me saving for the 3090, I'll go out and buy that now. And it's very, very clever from Nvidia. AMD used to do it completely the opposite way where they kind of release the stack in sort of the bottom one moving on all the way to the top one. And I mean, talking of AMD, is this kind of, you know, something that's going to spur them on for releasing Big Navi? Who knows? Again, it's very much in the rumor mill. Uh, the other thing that we did see is... Um, sort of the specifications leak. And this is probably the most interesting thing because if we look at sort of 3090, 3080 and 3070, we can see some quite stark differences, but there was a little bit of sort of leaked information that was left out, such as CUDA cores on the 3070 and the boost clock on the 3070 as well. The main thing that kind of really stood out was the fact that the 3090 is gonna have 24 gig of GDDR6X. 
So that is basically lightning fast. And I think the reason that they've done that as well is having fast memory and a large capacity is to rival what has kind of been rumored, rumored when it comes to big Navi and things like that. So it's gonna be very, very interesting. And the memory clock is sitting at 19.5 gigabits per second on a 384 bit bus. Um, at least on the 3090. As you sort of go down the stack to the 3080, we end up with a 320-bit bus and then a 256-bit bus on the 3070. Power-wise, that's where things start getting really interesting. I mean, if we take the 2080 Ti, um, two 8-pin connectors, 75 watts per connector, and then 75 watts for the PCI Express connector, we're talking 225. This is up to 330. So it's gonna be interesting to sort of see, is that all powered through this 112 pin? Uh, is there sort of supplementary power from anywhere else? We still have to remember that a PCI Express slot is 75 watts on its own. So take from that kind of what you will. Yeah, it's gonna be a very, very interesting one. And it's gonna be interesting to see how that translates because obviously power equals temperatures. Are we gonna have problems with sort of, you know, temperatures and things like that? Although saying that, these GPUs, if these specifications are anything to go by, are seven nanometer. So in theory, they've managed to reduce the footprint and the size of the silicon and the size of the die down to seven nanometer, which is great. And obviously that consequently kind of reduces temperatures, but they do the same thing like AMD with the Ryzen processor. Let's stick more cores in, let's stick more power in, and that consequently raises it back up again. Hence the, uh, the total power being 350 watts, which kind of explains the Founders Edition card cooler where it had kind of one fan here and one on the back as well. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be a very kind of interesting one to see. And if anything, the designers we've seen kind of, you know, pictures and leaks and stuff like that, if it is anything to go by with the Founders Edition, it does look quite industrious and more kind of, I don't know, in line with what the Quadro range would be. So I'm really interested to kind of see, you know, where this goes and kind of what happens uh, in terms of what the cooler is gonna be like. And if AIB cards really are gonna be able to kind of push the envelope of boost clocks and things like that, through extra cooling. So mainly I'm gonna be looking at a Zeus with a Strix card with a triple cooler, which again, we've seen pictures, it looks absolutely massive. An MSI with a Gaming X Trio, maybe even a Lightning card. It'd be interesting to see if that comes along. Now, the other thing I really wanna talk about is the fact that AMD announced the RX 5300 graphics card. I mean, did anyone hear about that? Anyone at all? No, they did it so sort of quietly. And I, I don't think that it's really gonna be something that's, uh, yeah, made for the, the retail market, should we say. It's, you know, very, very low key. And I don't know, maybe they're just kind of silently trying to steal a little bit of thunder from Nvidia, but honestly, I don't think that's the way to do it by releasing a low end graphics card to try and rival, you know, Nvidia's whole new architecture, which even then, Ampere, we don't know that much about. And I'm hoping that we're gonna learn a lot more about it today. We did see another leak from Zotac, NVIDIA 3080 and 3090 graphics card images. The problem is they're rendered images. They're not kind of the real card. There's nothing for scale, but they do look huge. So we kind of have some weird designs here. One being kind of a triple cooler and the other one, I don't know, maybe it's kind of an all-in-one liquid cooled design. It's a little bit kind of hard to see. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting, but based on what we've sort of seen in terms of uh, leaks and that, all subject to confirmation, there's gonna be plenty of models from Zotac. So we're gonna have an amp Extreme. So maybe that's what we're looking at with this kind of all-in-one looking in case card. Maybe it does have a fan and a radiator coming off of it, and that could be the amp Extreme. There is gonna be the Trinity Holo or Hollow, um, the Trinity, and then the same on 3080. We're gonna have an amp Extreme, a Trinity Holo or Holo, and a, a Trinity. Then on the 3070, they are, there's no point having the amp Extreme in that. They're gonna have the Twin Edge Holo and the, uh, the Twin Edge. So quite a lot of models there, no mention of 3060 or anything like that at all. But uh, Zotac have always been quite prevalent on having very, very good cooling solutions. So it's gonna be interesting to kind of see what they're able to do by having these large coolers on there. And if they're able to kind of, I don't know, maybe do something above and beyond what the Founders Edition can do. Because I honestly think a lot of people are gonna be buying Founders Editions as either early adopters or people who actually wanna have something where they can slap a water block on it. So Gameboard did exactly the same. They confirmed Nvidia 3090 and 3080 lineup and specs. I'm not overly struck on the design. I've got to be honest, it looks a bit garish, but you know, maybe that's down to the RGB. You can have full control over that, but it looks like there's gonna be a couple of different models. So on 3090, we're gonna have the Phoenix GS and the Phoenix, and then on 3080, exactly the same with the Phoenix GS 
and the Phoenix. But the specs are listed as well, so we've got 19 gigabit per second, which is a little bit odd. Uh, this is on the Phoenix 3080. Uh, but yeah, 19 gigabit per second, which isn't that far away from the Founders Edition 3090. So whether they've been able to kind of do something themselves to kind of increase above and beyond what a Founders Edition 3080 is gonna be, you know, is something that uh, we need to confirm at a later date. Uh, and then as we sort of scroll down, yeah, 3090 Phoenix GS, which is going to be their top spec, is 19.5 gigabits per second. So it seems like, you know, the same kind of figures as what we're getting with the Founders Edition. Um, but yeah, nothing else really seems to change it. I think it's more about the cooling. But something that's really, really interesting on this is on the Phoenix GS 3090, which is going to be GameWorld's top card. It lists the power connectors as 8 pin times 2. So I'm a little bit confused. I mean, what happened to the 12 pin? Surely if the Founders Edition needs it, having some massive cooler on there with a triple fan design and everything is gonna require that and maybe even more. So that's a very, very interesting one. And that's kind of where I'm gonna leave this video is, you know, a lot that's kind of been portrayed out there, a lot that's potentially confirmed, rumored. I don't know, it, like I say, if we all remember when the RTX 20 series launched at Gamescom, uh, Jensen, the first thing he said when he was on stage was, you know, there's been a lot of rumors out there, there's been a lot of speculation, and I can confirm that it was all 100% wrong. So I'm kind of hoping that, I don't know, maybe they do something similar again. Let me know in the comments section below, what do you think is gonna be the state of affairs after this kind of uh, Nvidia live stream when they actually unveil these Ampere graphics cards? And who knows, let me know in the comments section below if you want, I might even set up a little bit of a live stream so I can kind of go through stuff at the same time as, uh, as Nvidia are doing um, sort of the live stream and unveiling it and just kind of giving my reaction on what I think about everything that's going on. So yeah, gonna leave it there guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Bit of a, a weird one in comparison to our normal videos, but hey, it was an excuse to show you the new studio, which uh, is looking lovely, I'm sure you agree. And just kind of go through kind of what's coming up and what's expected. And I think at the moment, based on previous experience, it's hard to really confirm anything at this point in time. So yeah, maybe Jensen will surprise us or maybe this time the rumors will actually be spot on. So yeah, until the next one, I'll see you then.